you know, let's call this part three of being renewed in the spirit of our minds or the significance of renewing our minds in the spirit. You know, in uh, you know, Paul said in Galatians five sixteen, I say then walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill or carry out the evil desires of the flesh and right after that in verse 17 he says for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and and the two are contrary to one another so you cannot do the things that you would and that's talking about the will and you know that has really everything to do with one what we have our mind set on because he describes that in Romans 8 5 and 6 uh, those that are after the flesh set their minds, or the Greek word actually means set the affections of their mind on the things of the flesh. Those that are after the spirit set the affections of their mind on the things of the spirit. Just as he says in Colossians 3, 1, 2, and 3, if you be risen with Christ, set your mind, your affections on the things which are above and not on the things below. For your life is hid with Christ in God. So we need to we need to understand, you know, and as he said in Philippians chapter three, you know, he says talking about those who uh, glory in their shame, whose God is their belly, who mind earthly things, you know, and so we really because if if we have our mind set on the things of the flesh, and we're and we're thinking that we're walking in the spirit don't deceive yourself you know because we cannot walk in the spirit and have the affections of our mind set on the things of the flesh you know so you know and he's tried paul's tried to describe that in the uh, first corinthians 7 when he's you know he's just like he who he who possessed as though he possessed not. He who is married as though he married not. And you know, and and that's not to to talk about defrauding one another, because you know, as as he said, you know, the one who's married, you know, the your body doesn't belong to yourself; it belongs to your spouse. You know, so we don't want to defraud one another because that's against the will of God. We, we need to, I mean, we just, just need to understand um, what we have our mind set on, what we have the affections of our mind set on. And, and Jesus spoke of this. He says, you know, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And, you know, and, and another place he says, where your heart is, where your and it has everything to do with where our mind is you know there shall your treasure be also you know because you cannot you know and that just goes back to you can't be you can't sit there and set your mind on the entertainment of the world whether it be listening to music or watching movies and, and expect to walk in obedience by the Spirit of God because I mean you're not you you're you're walking self-willed you know how, like the heretic who and that's just the Greek word itself and it's talking the mate the primary definition of that is to choose someone in some of the older Strong's copyrights I had to find that word as someone who is self-willed and rightly so you know so we need to if I'm if if I'm living by the faith as he describes in uh, Galatians 2 20 and again in Romans 12 1 I beseech you by the mercies of God the to present your bodies as living sacrifices which is holy and acceptable unto him that you may, which is your reasonable service, which is just the, the beginning of our spiritual worship to God, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. Because unless we 
unless we surrender our will, we can't we can't learn what is that good, acceptable, perfect will of God is. You know, and I, I um, and therefore we can't be transformed by the renewing of our mind because we're not learning what the will of God is because we're constantly living selfishly to ourselves you know uh, and you know the writer of Hebrews he he goes on talking about all the men of faith and Abraham who lived in tents and Jacob you know our fathers you know They lived in tents. They sought a city whose builder and maker was God. You know, they were they were sojourners on this land. You know. We just need to come to an understanding of it because as Jesus told Pilate on the day of his crucifixion, you know, this world is not of my kingdom. Otherwise, if it were, my servants would fight for me. You know, and Pilate says, so you're a king then. And so we need to understand this, this, this world. As Peter said, the elements shall wax hot and melt. You know, this earth will be destroyed. This is a temporary earth. This was never meant to be permanent. This world was never meant to be permanent. Man was made in a temporary state, and this earth was made in a temporary state. And Paul describes that in Romans chapter 8. You know, and... and We just we need to keep a humble estimation, you know, and as we're growing, I, I suggest not casting your pearl before swine, as as Jesus said, lest turning they rend you and trample you underfoot. You know, so as you're as you're growing up, don't just cast your pearl before a swine and let someone uh, rob you of that and cast shadows of doubts and everything. I mean, you, we do well to separate ourselves from the world, you know. So. We just need to see the significance of what we have our mind set on. Because if we have it set on the things of the world and the things of the flesh, and we think that we're going to walk in obedience, I mean, that's why no one has any power in their life. You know, it was people have believed a lie for so many decades. What we have, the affections of our mind set on. I mean, don't let, don't let the devil get in your head. You know, first thing that he he done in Genesis chapter three, when he came to the woman, he says. Has God surely said you can't eat from any of the trees? You know, that's not even a legitimate question. That is not even a legitimate question. You know. Oh, not not every tree, but just this one tree. See, and that just enters. Unlegitimate questions just enter in an argument of Satan. You know, and there's nothing wrong with legitimate questions. 
if it's a legitimate question, there is nothing wrong with a legitimate question. But because that is how we learn. But Satan poses Ill illegitimate questions just to cast stumbling blocks in front of us and get us tangled up within what Paul describes in Second Corinthians chapter 10, you know, imaginations and reasonings and arguments and, you know, things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. And as he describes of the of the Gentiles in Romans 1 or 2 where he's saying, you know, who suppress the truth or hold the truth, hold the truth, hold it down, suppress it in their unrighteousness. You know, so we got what we believe we need to prove. As Paul was continually saying, prove all things, prove all things. Put those things to the test. You know, Scripture is not going to say something without having two or three witnesses to confirm that truth. Satan is the master of taking one scripture and twisting it and perverting it. You can't you can't isolate one scripture and ignore all the rest of them concerning that same thing. You cannot do it. And it's just like being born again. You know, people use Romans chapter 10 to say you don't have to be born again of water. And I'm telling you, Romans 8, 10, he tells us, you know, unless the body is dead, Christ does not dwell in you. And there is only one way that we put the body to death, and that's through the faith of Christ and believing with our whole heart that God raised him from the dead and confessing him Lord, meaning to make him Lord. We have surrendered our will. We have surrendered our will. As Paul said, I am cru to, by the cross, the world is crucified unto me, and I am crucified unto the world. Well, I mean, we really need to get it. If we want to obtain eternal life, if we want to enter into the kingdom of God, if we want to grow up, in Christ I mean we just need to understand the message of the cross that is the power of God unto salvation as he said in Romans chapter uh, 1 verses 16 and 17 you know we need to we need to understand that because if, if we don't understand that then I mean we can't move forward because we're not going to mature if we don't put the body to death through the faith of Christ and, and, it, and it begins in baptism and water because I mean scripture is clear you got uh, 1 Peter 3 20 and 21 you got Colossians 2 12 you got Romans 6 chapter uh, chapter 6 verse 3 and 4 you got 1 Corinthians 15, 29. It says elsewhere they do it, or, which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not. You know, I mean, it is through water baptism that that, that we put the body to death. In Mark 15, uh, 15 and 16, Jesus commanded his disciples go into all the world preaching the gospel of the kingdom to every creature and he who believes and is baptized shall be saved he who believes not is shall be damned i mean peter on the day of pentecost the the first message of the cross he stands and preaches christ crucified and risen from the dead and preaching from the prophet Joel concerning the the first fruits and people prophesying and speaking in other tongues and over a hundred nationalities all hearing them speak in their own language you know 
we need to understand that the message of the cross is connected with repent, be baptized into Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and you should receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. In, in Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 6, when Paul was coming through the upper coast of Ephesus and find certain disciples, and he asked them, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Well, they didn't even know that there was a Holy Spirit. Paul was like, unto what baptism then were you baptized? Unto John's baptism. So, you know, obviously... You know, obviously, because Paul rebaptized after explaining to them, as as Priscilla and Aquila did in chapter 18 to Apollos, who no doubt had baptized them under John's baptism, because he was going through the synagogues preaching Christ uh, crucified and risen from the dead, but only knew John's baptism. And then you read the the letter to 1 Corinthians in chapter 3, you know, you, Apollos waters and I plant, but God gives the increase because they were at odds with one another. And you can't take that out of context and apply that to every uh, building that, that claims to, because not all of them are out there preaching the truth and a lot of them are just deceived. I mean, so... Water baptism, I mean, but Satan has deceived so many people and, and who he hadn't deceived into, you don't need to be water baptized, is deceived into a trinity. Deuteronomy 6, 4, Hero Israel, Adonai, Jehovah is one Adonai, the Lord your God is one Lord. Man, if we can't, see, if we can't come to that revelation, and you know what? As John said, you have no need that any man teach you for the unction, the anointing you have from the Holy One, from Jesus, will teach you all things. And another part in this first letter, he says, I don't write these things unto you because you don't know the truth, but because you do know the truth. You know, anyone that has the Spirit of God and is willing to do God's will, as, as John 7, 17 said, if anyone be willing to do the will of God, they will know concerning the origin of the doctrine, whether it comes from God or man. Jesus said, whether it comes from me, because the Sadduce or the Pharisees in his day thought he was casting out evil spirits by the prince of demons, Beelzebub. So, I mean, we need to understand. I mean, if we're willing to... Do, and. and Paul Paul's clear in Second Thessalonians. He says, the talking about the Antichrist. You know, Jesus Jesus spoke of, you know, the abomination that makes desolation spoken of by Daniel prophet standing in the holy place. Well, it's the same person, the son of perdition that Paul was speaking of, and he says. He who now uh, withholdeth shall withhold until he be taken out of the way. Because once once the man of perdition is revealed, which he says shall, he shall not come unless there first come a falling away from the faith first, he says once he comes, Satan shall be taken out of the way. The he who's working is according to the presence of the adversary is what the Greek literally says. And we got to see that because it's described in Revelations that uh, when, when, when this man comes that Satan is chained up and he was, and he was given Satan's power. So, I mean, we need to, I mean, we need to understand it because we're in the falling away. The days of tribulation are ahead. You know, so.
let us take heed to ourselves and humble ourselves before God. You know, let us set our th- our minds, the affections of our mind, on the things above. You know, as Jesus said, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, our earthly needs will be added to us. You know, so we have put our trust in him because covetousness is idolatry. So that being said, I'm going to I'm going to end it on that. Amen.